I know I have the body of a weak and feeble woman, but I have the heart and stomach of a king. No, not me, obviously, because I really don't want a bloke's stomach, especially not one of the beer belly kind. No, nope. <laughs> this afternoon we're having a bit of a history lesson courtesy of Elizabeth I, who uttered that famous quote while rallying her troops to face the Spanish Armada. She often roared this morale-raising rhetoric whilst wearing armour. You know, the kind of chainmail stuff that keeps you alive should someone fancy aiming an arrow in your direction, which happened quite a lot back then. So far, so ultimate girl power, right? Woman in a man's job, fierce, feisty and fearless, yet feminine enough to worry about her hair and makeup at the same time. Ah, but hold on. Not so fast, because according to London's Globe Theatre, the fact that Queen Liz used the word king and wore battle dress in, check notes, uh, battle, meant that she was, wait for it, yep, non-binary. Oh, for goodness sake, where does this utter madness stop? Yesterday, the very same theatre announced that their new play about Joan of Arc centred on the fact that one of France's favourite patron saints also didn't identify as a woman and would have used the pronouns they and them. They also issued a picture of the actress playing the role wearing a chest binder to flatten her breasts. Oh, just yuck. As Joan successfully led several French military actions in bloody battles against the English, very much doubt she gave a monkey's what her pronouns were. Having a sword about to be rammed into your guts would possibly have that effect. Ah. But herein lies the crux of this matter. Both Joan and Elizabeth were women in charge of men. And we can't have that, can we? Perish the thought that the women in history who led the way for female emancipation so much that they have become feminist icons were just ordinary girls who didn't play by the rules men set them. Can't wait for someone to suggest that the famous uh, Celtic warrior Boudicca actually identified as Bernard on her days off. It's frankly hilarious that in an effort to be so achingly inclusive and diverse, today's modern-day wokerati are effectively cancelling 50% of the world's population. Modern-day heroines J.K. Rowling and Olympic swimmer Sharon Davis receive death and rape threats almost daily for daring to defend women's rights. Their home addresses are posted online with haters encouraged to intimidate and threaten them. Look, of course, the globe have every right to their opinions and every right to put whatever play they want on. If you don't like it, simply don't go and see it. It's called freedom of expression. And much more of that coming up later. But, likewise, you and I also have every right to our opinions and should be allowed to speak out as we see fit too. Doesn't always work like that though, does it? When I dared do a very harmless tweet about women's rights, I was temporarily placed in Twitter jail for hate speech. The fact that the woman who threatened to rape me for daring to post my thoughts had no action taken spoke volumes. Female role models in history are pretty thin on the ground in the first place. We have spent decades rediscovering women artists, authors, leaders and, yes, warriors. Now a regressive ideology is trying to take them away in the name of something they call progress. Let's be honest, the whole premise of Queen Elizabeth or Joan of Arc being non-binary is basically just a load of spherical objects. The very spherical objects that our two heroines definitely didn't have.